the, the red seaweed contains bromoform. So bromoform is a volatile compound that is very, very um, instrumental in cutting down methane emissions. So it's how it works is that it's just it interrupts the process of methane production, uh, methanogenesis, just at the very last step, um, the second to the last step, by disrupting the activity of an enzyme that those methanogens really need in order to complete the process of methane production. So it interrupts that enzyme and then cuts down methane emissions very drastically. So that bromoform is actually what makes this red seaweed quite special. Everybody, welcome to the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, brought to you by Wisenetics. I'm Todd Calloway, and we are dedicated to bringing you the latest insights and discussions in the field of dairy nutrition. So get ready to expand your knowledge and stay ahead of the curve with today's episode. So today we have Shedrick Amale, who is a PhD student from Iowa State University in the Department of Animal Science. So welcome, Shedrack, and would you please tell everybody a little bit about you, how you got to where you are? All right. Thank you, Todd. Um, first, I just want to thank you so much for the invitation to be on this podcast. Um, it's exciting coming, coming to share uh, insights about my research and just uh, some tips about some um, practical things we've been doing on farm and on the field. All right, so uh, my name is Shedrak Omale. I'm originally from Nigeria, where I did my undergrad in um, the Federal University of Agriculture in Nigeria. And um, after that, I co-founded a farm for like for two years, where I served as um, the farm manager and director. So um, in 2022, I then joined Iowa State University, um, started with my master's in animal science uh, with Dr. Ranga Puhami. I'm currently doing my PhD in Nutritional Physiology of Dairy Cows, and um, I'm also currently the Dairy Feed Manager at the Dairy Teaching and Research Farm um, of Iowa State University, yeah. Okay, well that means you're really busy having to do that and be a grad student at the same time. Yeah, it's it's quite busy. <laughs> Well, you did a really kind of cool study looking at feeding red seaweed to dairy cows. And you call it this weird combo that might just work. So what can you tell us about feeding the red seaweed to cattle? Okay. Um, yeah. So just to um, just give a background a little bit. So um, one of the big challenge is a problem with uh, beef and dairy cows currently is uh, methane emissions. So uh, methane emission is a byproduct of the digestion, of a natural digestion process. So when cows feed, it, uh, they undergo enteric fermentation where they produce volatile fatty acids. So in the production of those volatile fatty acids, um, hydrogen and carbon dioxide are also produced as byproducts. So a particular specific set of microorganisms in the rumen called rumen methanogens combine these byproducts to produce methane. So um, the, the problem with this is methane is a very potent uh, greenhouse gas. And um, it is about 28 times, um, it has um, a global warming potential that is 28 times um, higher than that of carbon dioxide over 100 years. So um, also about 10 to 12 percent of energy of the gross energy feed from, um, from of, of the cows is being used to produce methane. And so that's also implicating in um, um, feed efficiency for the cows. So um, red seaweed just it's a natural um, a plant product that is produced around oceans where you can find oceans and uh, one interesting thing about red seaweed is the fact that it can, it's, it's, um, it contains a bromoform, which is the active ingredient that, when fed to cows, can cut down methane emissions. So we did some work years ago looking at some of the brown seaweed and saw it reduced methane a little bit. So how is this red seaweed so special? Yeah, so um, like I said earlier, so the, the, the red seaweed contains bromoform. So bromoform is a volatile compound that is very, very um, instrumental in cutting down methane emissions. 
So it's how it works is that it's just it interrupts the process of methane production, uh, methanogenesis, just at the very last step, um, the second to the last step by disrupting the activity of an enzyme that those methanogens really need in order to complete the process of methane production. So it interrupts that enzyme and then cuts down methane emissions very drastically. So that bromoform is actually what makes this red seaweed quite special. So how does it compare to, say, the 3-NOP and some of these other treatments that we've been using? And I know 3-NOP interrupts that last enzyme, but how, do, how does it compare to some of these other steps that people may be a little more familiar with? Okay, so um, it's it's, it works in a similar way to 3-NOP. Um, yeah, so it, ju- it interrupts the methanogenesis pathway, like I said earlier. So just, just a bit different because this doesn't interrupt the process at the very final step. It's at the second to the last step of the methanogenesis um, pathway. And then it just stops the transfer of a methyl group. And uh, in so doing, kind of interrupts the um, methane production process. So it's kind of similar to 3NOP, although, yeah, because they all interrupt that methanogenesis pathway. So how big of a difference does it make? Like, you know, we always textbook number with menensin is it's a reduction of about 30%. What, what level are we talking about reducing methane with red seaweed? It's very um, dramatic, or should I say drastic. So, yeah, I cut down methane emissions by um, up to, like in my study, actually, we saw about 77% reduction in, um, in methane production in dairy cows. And then in some other controlled trials, it cuts down methane emissions by even up to 90%. Although this, of course, depends on, on the dose that is being fed and on the type of diet the cow is feeding on and also on individual cows. But overall, just about 0.2% of um, the cow's diet can actually cut down methane emissions by up to um, 40%. So for my study, we, we included um, seaweed at, the red seaweed at 0.3%, 0.45% and 0.6%. And we saw about 47% reduction at 0.3%. So very, very huge, I may say. Yeah. And, you know, we've always argued whether there is a upper limit to how much we should reduce methanogenesis before it totally disrupts the rumen fermentation. So did you see any effect in your study on milk production or any other metrics that farmers will actually get to measure? We didn't see any um, effect on milk production when at 0.3% in my study. So and overall, uh, looking at different uh, controlled studies with red seaweed, there is no um, drastic or maybe negative effect on milk production. Uh, however, when you feed at a high dose, um, there's a tendency to maybe disrupt milk production. So um, for my study, we actually looked at at a standard dose, which is 0.3%, and then we try to uh, increase the dose just because we feel sometimes in a practical setting, cows may ingest maybe even more than um, uh, maybe required. And so what happens when that happens? But generally, we didn't observe like um, very like negative effects. So yeah, so overall, it, it didn't affect milk production at 0.3%. Cows were still producing the same milk as the control cows. Yeah. Priority IAC, the only company bringing the fields of microbiology and nutrition together and the first ingredient in animal diets. Priority provides a more cost-effective and easier approach to nutrition. We recognize that not all bacteria are created equal. The specific strain truly matters. Priority IAC selects unique strains to provide the best performance in animals, and that's why we call these strains smart bacteria. Founded by Richard Bruning, helping to improve animal health one herd at a time. Well, that's excellent. And one of the questions people always ask on any of these products is, is it safe for the cows and is it going to change? Obviously, milk production didn't shift, but is it going to affect any of the components of the milk or of any of the health of my cows? Yeah, great question. I mean, uh, I think uh, recently there have been like a very huge concern about that. Will it affect the health of cows? And 
all that. So uh, part of my study also looked at the general health of the cows, and then we looked at every most of the parameters like the blood. We looked at um, um, the cows. We even utilize some of the cows to look at, you know, the tissues and the organs to see if there are maybe some kind of um, deleterious effects of feeding that red seaweed. And uh, overall, we didn't see any negative effect of um, feeding red seaweed to the cows because cows were, um, si were similar to the control cows we use in our study. So, um, and this was a very holistic evaluation of all the health parameters. Although we several studies are still going on on health, but the studies that are out currently, um, there are no kind of negative effects on the general health condition of cows, and that you can conclusively say this is as a result of feeding um, red seaweed. Not not yet. Yeah. I'm um, hopefully not yeah, not anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. So thank you very much for joining us today, Shadrach. Um, how much longer do you have working on your your PhD? Yeah. So um, I'm looking at graduating at some time in the fall, uh, 2026 or spring 2027. So just about a year or more there about. So yeah, I'm coming close. Yeah. Well, so a lot of the people that are listening to this, so definitely it's an opportunity for you to reach people and potentially find your next step in the industry. So it's been a great pleasure to have you on here, Shedrick. So, you know, this is something exciting and these alternatives to antimicrobials have a real place on the dairy farm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's going to conclude another episode of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast presented by Wisenetics. Thank you very much for joining us today. We really appreciate you listening to us. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay updated on future episodes. And if you like today's episode, be sure to leave a like on the link and leave us a review. Your feedback really helps us figure out who we need to talk to next. So until next time, this is Todd Calloway from the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast signing off. Have a great day, y'all.